Good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome to a live stream crochet along. We are going to make some sunflowers with a bit of a twist today. I'm just, uh, we're still just sort of sorting ourselves out here. Sorry for getting ourselves up and running a little later than normal. What are we, like 30 seconds, 45 seconds behind? <laughs> ah, Mondays, what can I say? First off, I want to thank Nico for gifting another membership. Nico, thank you so much. And it uh, looks like Bonnie won it. That got going just before we started the stream up. And we also had a membership milestone from Nico. Hi, Nico. And another one from D Diane, who's um, working on some blankets, which is awesome. And welcome to Kevin, who has just joined the family. Welcome to Alpaca, Kevin. Thanks so much for joining. We are going to revisit our Sunflower Coaster uh, today. So a couple of fun little tweaks though that we're going to make to this project. Since I know um, we're in the middle of fall, the Americans still have Thanksgiving coming at the end of next month. Here in Canada we've already had Thanksgiving, but I can never get enough of sunflowers. I just love their color. I love their shape. And interestingly, I feel like this pattern could, with a small color tweak, look something like a poinsettia. So I thought we would take our little sunflower coaster from coaster to dishcloth to poinsettia so that we can sort of demonstrate how you can take one pattern that if you like to make things for the season, like I love dishcloths that are sort of theme oriented or season oriented, you can take one little pattern and extend its life. So you can make some that look like a sunflower and you can have coasters, you can have dishcloths. I love this shape for a dishcloth and I love these little these little uh, pokey ends. I realized that I do the dishes by hand and it gives me like a little something to kind of get into a corner. So I'm gonna make one using cotton. I've got a whole bunch of cottons here today. And then um, if we've got time, since this is only a five row project, very, very short and quick, I'm gonna make one in poinsettia colors so that I can start my Christmas dishcloth pile. I love to give them away as gifts. I love to just sort of um, have them on hand for use in the kitchen. It's a nice way to add a little bit of Christmas theming to the kitchen where maybe you wouldn't necessarily have other decorations because you know it's a small space or you've, you, know, you don't want extra clutter in the kitchen when you're working. So a little bit of decor here and there. So that's the plan. And uh, like I said, we've got an original tutorial on this. We have a tutorial on its big brother, the sunflower um, placemat. So we have actual tutorials for both of those. We'll make sure they're linked below after the stream today. And we have patterns for these as well. And today's sneaky little sale over at our Etsy shop will be our sunflower coaster, the sunflower uh, placemat. We also have a bundle that includes both of those patterns together. That's on sale and our sunflower granny square. So four little sunny sunflowers. They're the featured listings. They're all 15% off today and tomorrow. It's our sneaky sale at the Etsy shop. <laughs> so if you've never picked up the pattern, then today's a good day to do it. And otherwise, we've also got that tutorial for you to check out later if you want sort of a shortened condensed version of it. Uh, but today we're gonna focus on taking our coaster to dishcloth and then from sunflower to poinsettia. So here we go. Welcome, welcome everybody. I've got my coffee. I'm going to be using a size uh, four medium weight yarn. This one I made in wool, which I just love, but I'm going to be using cotton today. So size four medium weight cotton, a five and a half millimeter hook, also known as an eye or a nine. I've got a stitch marker, a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. So that's all I'm going to need today. And of course I've got a nice little selection of colors. And Mr. and Stitches is here. Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> I just saw a mess, a comment from, sorry, I lost it again. Ah, Barbara says, what about extending to a hot pad? So yes, um, if you want something a bit bigger and you want it to be a hot pad, then I would recommend the coat, not the coaster version of this, but our placemat version, which is larger and make two in cotton and stitch them together. Um, or just one in double thickness. So use two strands held together and make the coaster size. So two strands of your cotton size four medium weight yarn held together with maybe a eh, six and a half millimeter hook, like a K, use the coaster pattern or just make two original placemat versions and you can stitch them together. So either or, and that'll be a nice thick um, hot pad. Um, I'm thinking the two strands held together to make 
with the coaster pattern would probably be about it will this is about six inches across or 15 centimeters so double stranding it will probably give it an extra two inches so you'll probably upsize to about 10 um I should say eight inches or like 18 to 20 centimeters yes yeah 20 centimeters in diameter and I'm talking from point to point so that's if you want to double strand it so great question Barbara thanks for asking and uh here we go all right I'm going to start with first of all focusing on the original pattern as it is a sunflower and its colorways and our first poll is going to be what color do I use at its center so I don't have any brown um cotton yarn but I do have let me pull these aside here I have black I have gray I have <laughs> purple and I've got a couple of different greens I'm going to be using this uh, light yellow for my petals um, so Mr. and Stitches if you want to get a quick poll going um, I'm already thinking I'm not going to use this one and I think maybe the purple's out. Yeah, the purple doesn't look terribly sunflowery. So it's going to be either a green center, a gray center, or a black center. So let's go with a pole. I'm just going to put my little things to the side here. And this is going to be my petal color, so I'll just put it off to the side. And I've got a cup of coffee. I'm so have can a you repeat sip. those colors mm -hmm. for me, please? So option one is black. And Lucy, thank you so much for jumping into the Etsy shop and picking up a pattern. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Black is option one, gray is option two, and green is option three. And that will be the center of our little sunflower. Um, this is for my sunflower dishcloth that I'm going to make. And I feel like these are the best ones to use because I'd like the whole thing to sort of have the same um, general texture all the way through. And I originally thought I might use this, but I feel like um, this could go one of two ways. I could end up with a little bit of green, but I could end up with just nothing but white, and I don't want to fiddle with that. Um, so I'm just going to stick to the plain, the plain ones. Uh, we'll give that, that poll about, oh... until about 100 votes, I guess. I think we can do that. And then we will get going. So just in case any of you are gonna make these along with us, um, this is based on a multiple of 12. So in our last uh, live stream, we were talking about sort of the basis of multiples for a lot of projects, especially when you're working in the round. And a coaster, like a doily, is usually based on a multiple of 6 or 8 or 12 or even sometimes 16. This one is based on a multiple of 12 and we're going to be using the double crochet stitch. <laughs> so I'm going to be using um, a base of 12. Chain 3 will count as a double crochet at the beginning of the row and then 11 more double crochets all worked into a cinch circle. So if you want to get started before we've chosen the color here as a group then you can go ahead and do that. We have already got 110 votes. All right, you let's call it. Go for it. Call yes. it or give it a few minutes. No, let's go. I want to I wanna get started. I'm okay, eager to get going. here we go. Wow, that was fast, guys. Thank you, everybody. I guess the lurkers have all jumped out of their little corners and shadows. <laughs> we love our lurkers. <laughs> okay, here we go. Green wins with 43% of the vote. Black was very narrowly just behind at 41% and gray with 14. Green it is. All right, everybody. So this sunflower is going to have a green center. I'm going to put my other yarns off to the side. So it's going to be green in the center and then this nice little soft yellow for the outer edge. That's going to be my dish cloth version of the sunflower. And then we will try again with a couple of slightly different yarn uh, color change up and we're going to turn it into a poinsettia. So same pattern, two different flower looks. And I'm going to find the middle here of my green. I'm starting with the middle. I'm going to begin with a cinch circle. And since this is a dishcloth, golly gee, Tammy, Tammy, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. Because this is a dishcloth, I want my center to be tight, but 
if you have trouble with cinch circles in the event of this being because it's a, a dishcloth and not necessarily a coaster if you want to make this a coaster i recommend the cinch circle method but if you're just going with the sort of loosey-goosey um dishcloth version then you can chain four and join to make a ring so if you don't want to do the cinch circle for the dishcloth you have that option a humongous hello and thank you to kathy and ronald jones who are in the house good morning with an extremely generous super chat. Thank you so much. They write, good morning, sweethearts. Jada and Mr. and Stitches, a bit nippy today, but you always warm our hearts. So <laughs> We look forward to every Monday because it's like coffee time with family. We Joneses must stick together. Love you too, Kathy and Ron. You're so right. We Joneses got to stick together. <laughs> and Lucy has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Lucy. It looks like Jane has won it. Congratulations, Jane. Welcome back to the family. Thank you all so much for being here. It is a little nippy out there today. It's a little bit breezy. The, the grass is uh, still green, but it's littered with leaves. My favorite kind of litter. <laughs> Definitely fallish out there. After we cinch, uh, create our cinch circle or your little chain four joined ring, you're going to make sure you've got three chains coming out of it and then 11 double crochets into that circle if you're making the cinch circle along with me make sure you're working over top of your little short tail so we can cinch the circle shut when we're done the chain three will count as a double crochet so the chain three plus 11 double crochets will give us our base of 12 stitches to work off of i am using a five and a half millimeter hook maureen it's also known as an i or a nine um, but if you're going to do the hot pad version, in which case you would double up your size four medium weight cotton yarn, so you'd use two strands held together, I would recommend a six and a half millimeter hook or a K. Um, that's if you want to make the slightly larger uh, hot pad version. All right, I think that is 12 stitches total, including my chain three. Let's count them up. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yep, 12. All right, I'm gonna take my short tail, cinch it up nice and tight. So my center just disappears completely. And we are going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. I am gonna work over top of my short tail. And that is row one complete. That's 12 stitches all the way around. We're gonna chain three. This chain three will not count as a double crochet, but we'll more on that when we get back around to it. Into the same place that we joined, if you pull up, you can see that little space. You're gonna double crochet directly into it. And now we're gonna double crochet twice into every single one of the remaining 11 stitches. So this is the first stitch right here that looks a little bit funny. Put two into that one. I'm working over top of my short tail. So two double crochet into each of the next 11 stitches. And then we're gonna do our little smart join that makes it a nice solid looking circle. Bobby would like to know if cotton yarn comes in different thicknesses, cause I can only find fine cotton yarn yes cotton yarn is definitely uh, cotton is just the fiber so when manufacturers are making yarn they well depending on the manufacturer they make it in different weight categories so right now the american standard weight category system for yarn goes from one to seven one being super fine fingering weight yarn and seven being crazy insane jumbo like as thick as a round of my wrist yarn um, and of course the fiber content can change depending on what the manufacturers think is, you know, the most frequently requested for particular projects. So where we are in Canada, most of the cotton yarn we find is in the size four weight category. Although I do find thread, crochet thread, um, is typically cotton and not necessarily cotton wool or wool or cotton acrylic. Um, so I find cotton most frequently as mercerized cotton crochet thread or a size four medium weight cotton yarn. I do have some cotton yarns in my collection that are size six bulky. Um, and I might have some size two sock weight-ish cotton yarn. 
Um, but of course, it, it, it just depends on where you're shopping or what brands are kind of available to you. Uh, here in Canada, Burnett makes um, a lot of cotton under the Handicrafter label. I think it's also sold in the States under the Sugar and Cream or Peaches and Cream label. It's the same cotton yarn, basically. It's really good for making dishcloths. It's, it's a good hardworking yarn. Uh, Line Brand makes a beautiful size for medium weight mercerized <laughs> yarn. Uh, called 24 7 cotton and that is from m m thank you so much for picking up a couple of patterns and i also see tori over there with a an adorable super sticker thank you so much tori for the little black cat i love black cats um so yes if you want to look into buying some cotton yarn that are in the medium weight category uh, as a canadian i know uh, burnett makes it um, and lion brand makes it but a lot of other manufacturers do too um, I know, uh, I think it's Hobby Lobby in the States sells something called I Love This Yarn But In Cotton. I know a lot of people really like that. I've never made anything with it, so um, I would defer to the expertise of our amazing family and community in the chat. If you know of a good medium weight cotton yarn and the brand manufacturer, please mention it in the comment section now. And I'm just going to continue adding two double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Great question. And to all of our Australians who are just dozing off, uh, thank you for spending your evening with us and have a lovely evening or night, I suppose. Bamboo is a good one, Dawn. Yep. Um, bamboo is uh, a natural, a natural fiber. Um, they make rayon from bamboo um, and then they spin that into yarn. I have some of that. It's lovely. I haven't made anything with bamboo um, that would be getting regular usage like a dishcloth wood um, or like a hot pad or a coaster wood. So if anybody else has used bamboo for those purposes, I'd also, you know, please feel free to leave your, your experiences in the uh, comment section or here in the chat. When you get to the 11th stitch you work your last two double crochets into it and then you are presented with this little guy this is what we often call the false stitch in crochet it sits to the bottom right of your chain three if you're right-handed if you're working left-handed it'll sit to the bottom left we are going to use it this time we don't always but we're going to double crochet once into it and then we're going to skip the chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet and that will give us 24 stitches all the way around. It pushes the chain three to the back and it gives you a nice even circle with no gaps. That's row two complete. Row three, we're going to continue to increase. We're gonna chain three right where we are. The chain three will also not count as a double crochet in this row. Right where we joined, you can see that space. We're gonna double crochet into it. We're gonna double crochet once into the next stitch. And now we're going to do over the next 11, well, 11 times over the next 22 stitches, we're going to work two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the stitch after that. So two, one, two, one, all the way around. And that will bring us eventually from 24 up to 36 stitches. I like circular increasing patterns. You sometimes have to pay a little bit more attention than maybe you would if you were just working straight back and forth. But I like watching circles evolve underneath my fingers. It's kind of neat.
I'm just rounding the corner here to my last few stitches. Two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the stitch after that. Nice simple little repeating pattern. It'll end with your last set of increases, so two double crochet into the second last stitch, double crochet into the very last stitch, and then once again we are presented with the false stitch, this little guy right here. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to double crochet into it once, and then skip over the chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. That is the center of our sunflower complete. I'm going to fasten off and weave in that tail. So we're done with the center color. So we've just finished this little bit right here. And now I'm just going to weave in my tail. a nice even center. Okay, and now I'm going to put on the petals. So I've got a sort of a soft light yellow. I don't have a yellow gold uh, cotton in my stash, but I figure since this is just a little dishcloth uh, for the sink, it'll still have kind of a nice fresh summery or sunny kind of sunflower color scheme going. And I haven't quite exited all of my uh, summery colors <laughs> from the kitchen yet. So this is a nice little transition. And once I've got this one made, then I'm going to make a poinsettia, which is definitely going to be um, in use within probably a month, I would say, from here. I start working some of my Christmassy stuff into the decor uh, about the middle of November. I have a girlfriend who does it first of November every year she puts up her tree because she just loves Christmas. Um, and of course, we don't have Thanksgiving in, Nova in um, November in this country. We have it in October. So basically, the second Halloween finishes, Canada goes full throttle Christmas. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like it's a little bit too early. But uh, I guess it depends on the mood everybody's in. All right. I am going to take my yellow yarn now. I'm going to create a slip knot on my hook. And I'm going to join my yarn... Um, in the stitch that's just to just before the fastened off knot. So I'm going to try and get up nice and close here. So we joined right here and created a little knot. You might still be able to see your chain three, which kind of gets pushed to the back. And there's a, a little bit of like a false stitch still sitting there. You don't want to use the false stitch. You, um, you want to just work it's just it's just before the fastened off knot. So what we're basically doing is skipping a knot. You are going to have 36 decent stitches all the way around and you're going to work off of 36 decent stitches. But what we want to do is just kind of like close in what becomes this little gap here. So for example, if this looks like my smallest little stitch, then maybe I will use the the larger stitch, which is maybe the um the the false stitch just to the right of my little tiny fastened off knot. Now, if I'm working left-handed, this will be just to the left. Um, but I, what I want to do is just skip this tiny little bit right here and blending it in um, so that it doesn't show. So I'm gonna join my yarn just before that stitch. And I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. There we go. And here we go. We're going to start making the petals. These petals are made all um, uh, in two rows. So row four is basically just another row of double crochet. And then row five is where we create the cute little petally bits. Uh, so row four is just simple double crochet. I'm going to chain three right where I am. And I'm going to double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So I'm going to skip over this tiny little knot. And I'm going to use the actual stitches. My chain three is actually going to count as a double crochet. And here's another fun little trick. So I'm just going to pull up my stitch for this second. Marty, thank you so much for picking up a pattern from our shop. I'm going to take my little short tail and I'm going to pull it through my first three 
double crochet stitches. And once I'm finished sort of uh, with all those stitches and I go to start weaving everything in, I can pull on that stitch a little bit while I'm weaving it back and forth and it will also help to close any little gaps that might want to show up there where that little knot is. So don't forget that you've got the opportunity to cinch. All right, so that's chain three, double crochet into each of the next three stitches, or in this case, four double crochet, because our chain three will count. We're gonna chain one. I'm gonna worry about weaving in the rest of that tail a little bit later. We're not skipping any stitches. We are just gonna double crochet into each of the next four. So double crochet into each of the next four stitches. and then chain one. You're not skipping stitches, you're just double crocheting into each of the next four and then chaining one. So it's double crochet, four double crochets, chain one, four double crochet, chain one, all the way around. You're using every single stitch and your little bit of an increase just comes with that chain one after you finish your fourth double crochet, but you're not skipping any stitches below and you're not working twice into any stitches. So just plain double crochet but there's a little chain one after every fourth stitch. And you're gonna get a nice little gap like this. You'll see it sitting in between your sets of four double crochets. And because we worked off a base of 12, so there were 12 stitches in our first row and we did an even increase in rows two and three, you are still working off a multiple of 12, which is why these little sets of four works. So four double crochet, chain one, four double crochet, chain one. I see some excellent conversation about yarn and where to get it and experiences going in the chat. Thank you guys so much. This is really valuable information for people who uh, don't maybe know where to go get stuff, are new to ordering online or new to buying yarn outside of their what they're regularly used to. We don't all have access to the same stuff, so it's really good to know what else is out there. I'm going to chain one and work the double crochet into each of my last four stitches. And because I used the stitch to just to the right of my fastened off knot, which in my case was actually the slip stitch, or I should say the, the false stitch because it looked the best, I don't have any extra stitches between my last double crochet and my chain three where I began. But don't forget that chain one in between. And when you get all the way back around, after you chain one after your last four double crochet, you're gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three because the chain three counts as a double crochet. And don't forget, we'll be weaving in our little tail. We will be closing in any little gaps that show up here, plus the additional work that we do with our little petals. We'll make any little gaps that shouldn't be there completely disappear. So this is what we're at so far. We've just completed row four. We have one more row to do, and that's where we create these fun little petals. I am going to take a quick coffee sip Oh, that's nice. Okay, here we go. Row five, the last row. And this is where we get to exercise some large stitches, not tall ones, just like wide ones. We're gonna use a double crochet four stitches together eventually. Mr. and Stitches? Uh, just big shout out to Colt. Hello, Colt. <laughs> Danny's grandson is waving and, and saying hello to us. Aw, well, hello, hello, hello hi hello. Colt. Hello to everybody who is uh, not actual fingers at the keyboard right now. <laughs> okay, row five, the final row. Let's turn this little bit of yellow into some actual petals here. We are going to, right from where we are, we joined in the top of the chain three. We're just going to reach backward into that chain one space. So it's not really anything. You're Instead of going forward, you're just sort of reaching backwards and you're just gonna slip stitch kind of loosely into it. 
just so we can start in that space and rather than slip stitching all the way across we just want to start here in this space easy doing nice little loosey goosey slip stitch and from here we are going to chain three and we are going to double crochet four stitches together across these four stitches so the chain three and the three other double crochets that started the free previous row and this is how we do that yarn over start a double crochet in the top of that chain three and work the first half of it yarn over start another double crochet in the next stitch and work the first half of that yarn over start another double crochet in the third stitch work the first half of that and once more yarn over start a double crochet in the last stitch and work the first half of that so now you've got five loops on your hook every time you do a double crochet multiple stitches together you're working the first half of a double crochet in every stitch that you want to join together and you'll always have one extra loop on your hook then the number of stitches that you're joining together so that's the loop you began with and you'll have a loop representing each of those half worked double crochet stitches so five loops all together in this case yarn over and pull back through everything so now boy that's kind of loose isn't it you know what i'm going to take that part and i'm going to we Just have a question about the yarn. Sure. Uh, the one you're using, is, the, is that yellow or is it like a cream color? This is yellow. It's a yellowy okay, color. Okay, just so everyone knows, it's it's yellow, but uh, the camera's kind of picking up, it kind of looks like a cream color. Well, it's definitely creamy compared to this golden yellow. Um, so it's like a creamy yellow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I mean, the color here is whatever you've got handy. I am trying to use what I've got in the stash. Um, and these are the cotton yarns that I had. I don't have, this is this is wool. So when I made this coaster, I used 100% wool, which is why I've got this lovely rich brown and this lovely golden yellow. But this is gonna be a dishcloth. So I'm just using the cotton I have in the stash. And this is the yellowiest yellow I have. <laughs> Any colors that you've got though. I just basically tightened up on that little stitch a little bit because I didn't want it to show. And I'm gonna do this whole thing over again. So I'm gonna chain three and I'm gonna work that four double crochet together across those stitches again so I'm working the first half of a double crochet in each of those stitches I'll have five loops left on my hook yarn over pull back through everything and that pinches these four stitches together so that's where we're at in terms of row five and now what we want to do is actually build this little nice little bumpy point this is what gives it that really cute sort of i want to say i almost want to say like cartoony but like that two-dimensional sunflower like if i was drawing sunflowers my sunflowers have this little point on the edge of the petals and this is how we do that nice and easy we chain three and then we slip stitch into this loop right here that is what kind of covers those four double crochet stitches together. So there's this little loop right here. You're gonna slip stitch right into that. And that creates this little bump right at the top. So chain three and then slip stitch into that little loop that covers that those four double crochets are called, all kind of slung into. And then we're gonna chain three we're going to reach down to that chain one space from the previous row so the chain one space in between and we're going to slip stitch and so that's the entire petal chain three double crochet four stitches together make a little point to your petal chain three slip stitch and then chain three and slip stitch into the chain one space so let's do that again right from where we are we're going to chain three now we're gonna double crochet these four stitches together. And like I said, we've already got a, a tutorial on how to do this. So when you want to kind of see a more succinct version of this pattern, we'll make sure that the appropriate links are down below. Four together. Now the little point, chain three. Here's that loop right here that crosses over top of those stitches. 
So I'm going to slip stitch right into that to anchor my little chain three. And then I chain three more and I anchor that in the chain one space between my stitches from the previous row. And here we go. You're going to have 12 points all together once you're done with this row. And that is it for the little coaster and or dishcloth, depending on what your purpose is. Or like I said, if you're using two strands held together, that's all you need to do for your hot pad. Marie! Marie has picked up a couple of patterns in her Etsy shop. Thank you so much, Marie. And a gifted membership from Nico. Thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted a membership and it looks like a doodly's crochet, also known as Julia, has won it. Congratulations, Julia. The nice thing too about making something like a hot pad or a dishcloth is that you don't have to worry about um, uh, blocking it because just starting to use it will loosen up those stitches. I've got a little knot here. I'm going to work over top of that. There we go. Oh, I love that technique. I love it. Look at how delicate and fancy it makes that, that edge look. And it's just so cool. And it's so simple. It's just chains and double crochets. So what have I got here? I've got five done so far. <clears throat> I'm gonna have nine all together. So what did I say? We have a we have a base of twelve. So we're gonna have nine points. Yes, because thirty six divided by four is nine. So nine times four is thirty six. Thirty six is also divisible by twelve. I love math. So we go from a base of twelve. 12 is divisible by 4, um, and when we do that times 3, you've got 9 points. So your base of 12 can turn into 12 points, it could turn into 8 points, it could turn into 9 points, because you've got uh, a 4 and 3 and 6 are all, and 2 for that matter, are all bases of 12. Um, so there's all sorts of pretty little ways that you can, this is why you'll see that frequently in the base of uh, doilies and whatnot. You'll see that 12 used, because it can turn into multiple different things different sets of things. I'm liking the green and yellow though. I am too. Yeah. It's kind of summery, but I'm here for it. A little summery, but I like it. Can you hold it up closer to the camera so we can see more detail? Yes. Give me one second here while I chain three and slip stitch into that chain one space. So I've got my little petals and my points happening. I'm going to do another leaf here, so or I should say petal, so I'm going to chain three. I'm going to work a double crochet four together across those four stitches. Then the little pointy bit at the top, chain three. That little loop right there, I'm going to slip stitch into it. That anchors my little chain three. Chain three more and slip stitch into that space. Looks like I've got two more to do. Deborah has picked up three patterns. Thank you so much, Deborah. Quick shop. reminder to everyone who's joining uh, late, we're having uh, a little mini sale on the sunflower pattern. Yes, it's our sneaky sale. The today's sneaky, sneaky today's sale. Sneaky today's sneaky sunflower sale. It's uh, our little sunflower coaster 
Um, we also have a matching uh, placemat. So there's those two patterns are separate. There's also a bundle where they're both together. So if you want them both, you can save a little bit and get the bundle. And we also have a sunflower granny square and we put that on sale too. So those four patterns are our little sneaky sale today. I enjoy this last row of this pattern so much because it, you, you do so much in a single row and it feels like it should be complicated, but it's really not. When you chain your last three and you anchor it in that same chain one space where you slip stitched into kind of backwards to start, that's it. You can fasten off and take a moment to weave in all your tails really well. Uh, like I said at the beginning, we've got this little short tail here. I want to weave it back and forth to make sure that I don't have any uh, sort of gaps showing at the base of this petal. So that's one. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to weave it through these double crochet four stitches together. I'll probably go through that and back. There we go. Making sure that I'm not pulling it too tightly. I don't want to pull the tops of my petals out of alignment. And then I have one more little tail to weave in. There we go. Crochet with Diane would like to know if we're going to be doing any more bulky weight projects soon, bulky weight yarn projects. The Yes. Um, so we gave the family members a little sneak peek on Friday. If you're a family member, you should be able to see that members only video. Yes. Um, yeah. It'll be on go to the... the channel homepage. Uh, if you're a member, it'll show up up top, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Click on our, our channel homepage. You should see the members only video from Friday. And we will hopefully have a bulky weight size six project this Friday. There we go. I always like to take a moment to pull out all my little petal points. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, cotton. Cotton is so great. You can even just block it with your hand. And now I've got an absolutely adorable little dishcloth. <laughs> For the sink! Okay, this would be super cute, especially if I had some nice brown cotton. So if I was going to make a bunch of these, um, like a little, like a, to give away as little gifts, let's say I'm, I'm going uh, visiting, or if you've got Thanksgiving coming up um, in November here with the Americans, if you wanted to bring a little hostess gift or have something to give away, this is a really cute little dishcloth idea. And so I would recommend getting yourself some nice brown cotton and if you can find it, a nice golden uh, cotton for the edges. But I mean, this has a nice summery feel to, to me. So I will definitely be using this pretty much immediately after today's live stream. <laughs> this is so cute. I really like that. So that's going to be a little dishcloth for me. As I mentioned, if um, you're going to make it into a hot pad, I recommend holding two strands of your yarn held together throughout and maybe a K hook and that should take it. This will be about six inches across 15 centimeters. That'll take it from about six inches up to about eight inches or 20 centimeters in diameter. And that's a nice size for a hot pad. That'll give you more than enough kind of like um, pot sitting sh um, sh size through here. Um, but this makes a really nice little dishcloth. And of course, um, Otherwise, it also makes a nice little cotton coaster. So this was my original plan was to use these as coasters. And I do, I've got a set that I use in coasters. We have a matching placemat set, which just looks really cute on the table. But I realized that this would also make a cute dishcloth. And now I'm gonna turn it into a poinsettia. So I'm gonna switch around my colors here. I'll keep these guys up here and sip my coffee. And hello to Michelle. Michelle with a membership milestone. Michelle's been a member for 44 months. Thank you so much, Michelle. She says, I'm super late, but hope everyone is having a wonderful day. We are, and I'm glad you could make it. <laughs> Better late than never. In fact, when it comes to crochet, you're never really late with anything. 
Uh, okay, so let's go. I've got, for my poinsettia, I've got two shades of red. I'm already kind of leaning into, I'm already kind of leaning into this one. <sighs> and now you guys have got me thinking I should make a hot pad. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. Let me grab my hooks. Oh my goodness. Christine, Christine, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. Um, I was saying this whole time to go with a K hook, so I'm going to use, where's my, is that my seven? I think that's my seven. Yeah, that's my seven. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do it. Um, now, will I hold these two together and get like, this would be an interesting, I've got one slightly darker red, oh yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna hold these two together for two reasons. One, it's easier to feed from two different balls when you're holding two yarns together. And two, I kinda like how this is gonna look. It's gonna give some depth to that poinsettia leaf. Those two slightly different shades of red. So I'm totally here for that. Shelly, with a membership milestone. Shelly's been a member for 59 months at Vicuña. My gosh, thank you, Shelly. She says, how does a gifted membership work? I think, Shelly, that as a member, you can buy a membership as a gift by clicking on the little, uh, the dollar sign icon at the bottom of the live chat. And I think it should be an option for you as a member. You should see the option to do a membership milestone. You should see the option to uh, change your membership. I think you can do that when you're already a member in that same place. You should be able to see the options of buying like a, super chat or a super sticker. And I think gifting a membership is an option there too. Mr. And Stitches, I think you know that a little better than I do. Um, well, y yes, you're, you're right. Now they do, they're constantly moving and changing things, yes. but in general, you are right. And there's a few more things to know about it. Um, when you do gift a membership, it happens. I think you can only do it during live streams. Yes. And it's, we don't, no one decides who, who wins it. It goes by, um, activity on the channel or activity on the in the chat. Yeah, it's an algorithmic so, yeah, thing. Yeah, YouTube system chooses who wins it. Yeah, uh, based on who's in the who's in the chat and who is active. And the other thing we don't choose is the level, and it defaults to our our silk level. Yes. So if you're gifting a membership, it defaults to the silk level. And I believe a gifted membership lasts. The person who wins it, it lasts for uh, 30 days. 30 days, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, think that's, I think that's all we know about it. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, Kimberly with a membership milestone. Kimberly's been a member for 18 months. Thank you, Kimberly. Kimberly says, hello, Jada and Mr. and Stitches. Hello, Kimberly. How's it going? Welcome, welcome, everybody. So this, so I'm just, spur the moment, I'm going to do the whole hot pad thing because I think that's an awesome idea, but I'm going to make it a poinsettia. So here's the question. Mr. and Stitches, get ready for a poll. I have a question for you. We're sure. uh, almost an hour in. Do you need a, a 30 to a minute, 30 second to a minute break? Um, or are you good? Actually, you know what we're going to do? Um, we're going to end this po end this live stream and then start another one just so these two are separate i think that makes a lot more sense yes you want to start a whole new live stream yeah how's everybody feel about that we're just going to stop it so that we have a a dishcloth version of this live stream and then we will literally do another one right now i don't but... i don't think that's necessary no no you don't think that's necessary no i just thinking because then people might might feel like anyone who's coming later might be like oh this is a two hour live stream oh, yeah, versus there's an mean. hour and an hour uh well let's uh, let's see what everyone in the chat says that's Maureen a great says, idea. okay nico says sounds good makes sense that makes sense to me because we're we're kind of doing two separate um I just, projects, yeah right? i just feel like it was it's two separate i, I love right, the well, idea i just hope everyone's able to find us again well, we'll give it like, we'll 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 get the, the we'll get the the stream going and give everybody five minutes to land before we go live. I think okay. that, that's fair. Okay, all right. Fair. So let's take let's take like a five minute break. Yeah. And then we'll set up a new stream and give everyone time to find us. Yes, I see Junie making a comment about being able to snip it into two. It, it's actually a lot more. It doesn't work as well for us when we do that because when we try to to edit an existing live stream, it either doesn't work or it takes up to 24 hours to process. 
So it's actually a lot easier to just do this and then the, the stream will be good kind of, like the stream will work properly right from the beginning as opposed to having to wait because of a small edit. So <laughs> I think it's just faster and easier to do it this way. So we're not going anywhere. We're just gonna end this stream. We're gonna take five minutes, everybody, and then we'll get the next stream going and we'll make a hot pad, same pattern. That sounds great. Okay. Yeah. See you soon, everyone. See you 